from IRS Group. IRS Group has been happily part of the OET All Stars family and uh, helping all OET candidates during the pandemic and beyond. So I'm just waiting for all of you to log in. Please make sure you comment as you as you are able to log in and uh, excellent. So welcome back to OET All Stars. And these lessons are designed to help all of you to excel in your OET test, but also to be excellent healthcare professionals. And um, we'll be looking at some aspects of clinical communication of uh, speaking. Um, good to see uh, Devin, Gino, Saumya, Anju, Shaiju, Angelo, Ramya Krishnan. Hello, everyone. Great to see all of you. Lakshmi, Maya, Suresh, Anju, Shaiju. Good evening, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are from uh, different countries. Uh, Nia says salam from Afghanistan. Great. Ahmed uh, says good afternoon from Dubai. Vijoy, hi Vijoy. Bianca, hello. Good to see all of you. Wada, wonderful, wonderful. Shamiala. And uh, I'd also like to know um, whether you are preparing for your OET. You have a test date booked. Adiraji Nair, Sunimal, Jenny, Sri Lakshmi, Jasmine, Gina, Deepika, Obegera, Sunimal, Shen, Shinu. Good evening from Mumbai. Ayana, hello from the UK. Deepika, James, Neetu Vergis. Hello, everyone, everyone. Good to see all of you. Sorry if I missed some names. Um, and uh, yes, so we will be interacting throughout the session. Um, so my focus today is um, on clinical communication and particularly uh, I'm looking at relationship building, but a very specific area of relationship building, which is developing a respectful attitude. Now, before um, we head into um, a detailed discussion and a lot of activities, I want you to think of this. Dr. Don Berwick, he is a globally acclaimed healthcare administrator, been involved in the President Obama administration. He is closely knit with the NHS in the UK. And he says, we are guests in our patients' lives. So as healthcare professionals, think of the multitude of patients you have interacted with, hundreds and hundreds of them, thousands of them. Can you think of some of them? You would be remembering at least a few names. Think of them and they have been, you have been guests in their lives. So what sort of guests have you been? Did you have a very happy and cordial relationship? So just a thought before we head into, and I'll be taking a lot of questions uh, from you as we proceed. But uh, to begin with, can you think of this? Why should you develop a respectful attitude as both as an OET candidate and as a healthcare professional. Please type in your answers. Why should you develop a respectful attitude? Can you tell me why it is important to have a respectful attitude? Please type in your responses. What is the importance of respect in clinical communication? And when you think of that importance that pans across the OET's test, particularly the speaking subtest, and also at work as healthcare professionals, as nurses or doctors or pharmacists or uh, any other healthcare professional. 
to connect and communicate effectively, achieve a goal, very good, very good. Uh, having a good attitude can easily build rapport. Um, despite being our patients, they deserve to be respect, respected. Um, that brings a sense of confidence in both the patients and health, health workers uh, to develop interpersonal relationship. Excellent, excellent. So keep posting your responses and uh, I'll try to follow. It helps the client to cooperate with you effectively. Very uh, true. To let the patient feel free and comfortable as well. Um, to let my patient feel comfortable and cared. Um, to build trust. Very good, Ahmed. To promote rapport. It's very important to make uh, a good relationship with patients, strong relationship. Maintain trust and confidence. Jaya Mariam, very good. Excellent answers. Thank you very much for, for all your responses. And I'm glad that you have responded um, to have work satisfaction and to get your work done smoothly. Neetu work is excellent. Um, to explain the patient's case easily and smoothly. Um, to show your way of work and your skills. Ayana, very good. Jenny, first of all, all the patients are our customers. Absolutely, absolutely. So before, I'm happy to see that all of you have a great deal of idea on why it is important. Um, I've got uh, a, a communication uh, snippet between a health professional and a um, patient. So the, the healthcare professional, could be a doctor or someone, is telling the patient, you have heart failure. You will never climb a mountain again. We will refer you, but that is as much as we can do for you. And think of how terrible the patient must feel. The thought bubble says, how can you be so blunt and rude? I feel very uneasy and anxious. Quite often when you have to tell patients something, especially um, let's say discussing the prognosis or something of that sort, sometimes health professionals become a little bit too direct and blunt. Have you ever witnessed such situations at work? Perhaps it couldn't be you, but a colleague, someone at work uh, who did not maintain that uh, rapport building or um, take the patient into consideration. Consider how hurtful or offensive it could be for um, the, the person. Well, have you ever seen that at work? And what could the implication of that be? So that's something for you to, um, to think about. Now, health, healthcare providers and governments and government bodies um, organizations like the NHS Trust, they're all moving towards empowering healthcare professionals with tools to have a smooth uh, communication. But still, at some instances, it could be very few, very rare, but there are instances when healthcare professionals do not show the required respect. Yes, so it goes on. There isn't any point in the exercise test it isn't going to do any good. You're going to have a pacemaker fitted now. Now, perhaps the, the patient would have asked about an exercise test and you know what the outcome of the test would be, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but to tell the patient that it's of no use at all, you're going to have a pacemaker fitted anyway. So why bother about the exercise test? The patient says, I'm shocked at how you treat me. I don't think you can trust me. Now, the patient might even think, was it really necessary to have a pacemaker in the first place? Because he is not taken into consideration. So you would have witnessed a lot of such poor communication or breakdown of communication at work. 
And so what does it lead to? Lack of respect and attention could lead to breakdown of trust. Of course, many of you talked about trust. Feeling not understood. Sometimes a lot of your patients have that feeling that the health professional is not understanding him or her, the, the patient, suspicious of your intentions. So sometimes we always talk of patient-centered care and informed decision-making, but sometimes there are instances, again, it could be rare, in, depending on which country you're referring to, where the, the patient is not sure whether a particular treatment or procedure is required. So people get suspicious of the intentions of the healthcare professional. And it leads to no collaboration. There is no openness. And uh, so that leads to poor outcomes and poor compliance because trust is missing and uh, the patient doesn't uh, even understand why something is being done. On the contrary, when you show an attentive and respectful attitude, what happens? You establish trust with the patient. And uh, I'm glad some of you already were quite aware of how trust is built through uh, respect, compassion, being attentive to their needs, etc. And it's much easier to collaborate. Things become smoother again. Some, someone had earlier talked about that. It becomes uh, the workplace becomes smooth. The, the task itself gets easily done, which is a great thing because as, as doctors or nurses or other healthcare professionals, workplace could be stressful. So something that gets things done quickly is something that everyone should cheer up about. And the patient understands your motivation to help. So they know why you are there to help and they would be very happy to take that help and uh, discuss things and uh, you know both of you would be on the same page which is fantastic so so remember even though i'm talking to you from the uh, perspective of the workplace every single aspect each of these aspects are applicable for the oet's speaking subtest as well and despite your knowledge of these things, when it comes to OET speaking test, you might think this is just a test. So the, the, the knowledge and awareness you have might not be transferred in the test. So that's an important area where you have to remember that these skills are, there is a, a, a blending, there is a crossover. You can't separate the, the clinical aspects you have acquired for work from the OET speaking uh, context. They are interlinked and that would tremendously bring a huge change in your OET speaking. So if you have been struggling with OET speaking or you are worried or anxious about uh, how you would perform on the OET's uh, test day, please remember, imagine that you are at work. So your, your expertise and even a, a lot of the clinical communication awareness you have would easily translate. And uh, that, that would uh, really help you in uh, OET's speaking test as well. And although we are looking at a particular indicator of uh, a criterion, please remember that they are all interconnected. For instance, um, you, you cannot be non-judgmental. Um, if you cannot show respect. So if you show respect, you will not be judgmental. So that's the kind of uh, interconnection. Or um, if you are uh, kind of, you know, you want to um, think of the patient's perspective, then you need to show respect. So respect is the foundation of many of the, these things. So, um, so once again, a few aspects of uh, the things we have discussed before, we go into uh, a lot of interactive um, activities. When you show respect, you establish trust with the patient. We have already talked about that. So one, um, one thing which you can perhaps do to do that is to focus your attention on things that matter most to your patient. For instance, um, the patient or whether it's in the OET's uh, role play 
or otherwise would say they want to go home, whereas you would insist on admitting the patient uh, to the hospital. So think about why would the patient be reluctant? Maybe they have uh, children to care for at home, or they could be concerned about who is going to walk my dog if I don't return home. So when you pay attention to, to those aspects, when you focus your attention on those things and then tell them something that would perhaps sort it out, they would be happier and they would easily um, agree uh, to be admitted or something of that sort. So paying attention to some of the um, things that are important to them is one way you show respect and that in turn helps you to establish trust. Um, now, as we have already discussed, another outcome would be that it's easier to collaborate with the patient. Now, how can you do that? You can ask questions, invite them to participate in the treatment and the care. So when, when collaboration is very uh, smoothly going on and there is this interaction between you and your patient so the dialogue is automatically happening which is absolutely great and if it's in the ot speaking context you would be engaging with the interlocutor who stands in the the shoes of the patient or the carer and you would ask questions and uh, invite them to participate in their uh, treatment so you have uh, a lot of uh, shared decision making and um, aspects of information gathering and giving and every aspect of uh, clinical communication would be covered there so that's really going to help you right um, and the patient understands your motivation which we have seen earlier so you can explicitly outline the reasons and motivation behind your decision so if you are telling the patient that they are going to be admitted, tell them why you think their admission is better for their health outcome. So, and what, what drives you to make that decision, which, uh, you know, they would really appreciate the reason behind that. And um, it's going to be fantastic. So we are going to do a few activities now where we have some uh, live characters coming to help us in this season. Last season, we had uh, Christine and Leroy. Um, and this season, we have more people to help you in your OET preparation. I've got Amelia, Joseph, Edward, Maya, and Claire. So please welcome them. With their examples, we are going to look at some um, instances, some scenarios, which could be something you might get in your OET's role card or something which um, can happen at work as well. All right, so let's see what their, their problems are. And towards the end of the session, if you are able to show them more compassion, to show them respect, be attentive to their needs, it's going to be great. Your OT speaking is going to be absolutely phenomenal. You're going to gain all the confidence you require for the test. and it's going to reflect at work as well. You will be really compassionate with your patients, with people you interact every single day. And so that's going to bring in a great deal of positive uh, results at work as well. And every healthcare organization these days wants you to be more compassionate. They want you to be considerate, to be respectful, to show dignity. So what we, we are discussing in these few minutes is going to impact the way you perform in your OET's test and also the way you perform at work. So let's go and see what their problems are. Now, remember, we are not discussing exhaustive, exhaustively on all the aspects of um, clinical communication with regard to compassion, dignity, and respect. but. All I want you is to go through these examples and see how you can improve in your performance, in your test-taking skills, in your language skills. 
which is going to be of tremendous value for you. Right. So let's look at Amelia. What's her problem? Now, these instances are going to showcase different ways in which you can show respect. So listen to your patient. Now in, in the chat box, I want you to type, how would you listen to Amelia? She is presented to the emergency department with an injured index finger. So what would you ask her? There are different ways of doing it. Doesn't have to be one particular way, which is the right way. I would be happy to have as many answers. Um, so in the chat box, please type what you're going to ask Amelia or tell Amelia to show that you're listening to her. Look at her, she's a bit concerned it seems. What would you tell her? Just waiting for your responses. Staying next to here and hold her hand and then she will start speaking about what is hurting. That's great, Ayana. Appreciate your concern, Elham, right? Yes, you showing um, uh, empathy, telling them that you appreciate, but it's always good to tell what the concern is and um, the reason for that. Uh, that would be even better. Excellent. I can see that you are in pain. I really understand how you feel. Very good. Um, focus on her pain and talk to relieve her expressions. I see that you seem concerned. If you don't mind, could you please let me know what's bothering you? Well, I can see that you're worried. How may I help you? Excellent. Um, I'm Shen and I'm your nurse for today. It seems you have discomfort in your hand. May I know what happened and the pain scale that you're feeling right now? Very good, Shen, but before you ask her to, uh, to give a score, you should better tell her what the pain score uh, scale would be like. Um, uh, Jasmine, I saying I can understand it's painful. All right. Um, yeah. Uh, I'm sorry to hear that. I'll try today my best. Hello, good evening. Hi, how, how can I help you? Yes, Mary. Um, hello, Emilia. You seem worried. How may I help you? Yes. Uh, now, so that's good. So very good uh, answers from all of you. Um, now, a lot of candidates very commonly say, I can understand your concern, but I'd like to tell you that sometimes that might not convey empathy. Um, so when you uh, want to show empathy, it involves a, a little bit more than just telling, I can understand your concern. Would you please tell me what happened um, yes, Shija Peter, good. Jesley, hi Amelia, I can understand you going through a difficult situation. No need to worry and I'm here to help you. I'm sorry to hear that um, you have got an injure, injure in your index finger, but nothing to worry um, that you will get well soon. Um, let's sit down first, I will take care of her. One one yes, very good. Elham says you are you're right. It causes severe pain, but I assure you that uh, with painkiller, maybe you you feel um, could be uh, more comfortable. Right. Many of you have good points for Amelia, and um, so I've got an example for you to to showcase listening. Can you tell me about? the injury on your finger. You can ask questions um, to 
Um, um, yes, Ch Cheramai says uh, from scale of one to 10, please tell me how painful it is for you. Very good, yes. Um, See, so many of your answers are valid. They are good answers, excellent answers. Um, but it also depends on how you tell or ask the um, the tone of your voice, your non-verbal cues. They are all important part of respect because sometimes you can just ask, uh, tell me what happened to you, or uh, can you tell me about the injury on your finger? And could, you could be pretty fast and might not have the repo. Um, don't worry, I'll help you. It will heal within two days. Yes, Jaya. Um, try to avoid too much of don't worry and I can understand your concern uh, because it's too common, and but it also might not convey uh, what you intend. It, the respect might not be perceived or felt by um, the patient. Good going. So from Amelia, um, let's move on to someone else. And now I want you to uh, think about showing respect by asking for their opinion. So we are looking at different ways in which you can show respect. Now I want you to type how you would ask for their opinion. Now Joseph has returned to the practice and complains that the medicine given for his headache was not effective. So he's upset. He had come to the clinic perhaps a few days ago. You gave him some medicines, but it did not work for him, or that's what he says. And so you, you want to show respect. And one way would be to ask his opinion about uh, his medicine not working or something of that sort. So again, uh, type in um, the chat box with your statement or question asking for Joseph's opinion. Tracy says, for the previous question, I can see that you're holding your hand. What actually um, happened? Yes, Tracy, you can ask that. Very good. So now um, type in uh, your responses for Joseph. Can you describe more about your pain, please? Fatma Siri. Very good. I hope it's about the headache, which is um, a good thing. But can you reflect opinion a little bit more? Because when Joseph is asked for his opinion, he would feel appreciated. Joseph. Um, Ajayan says, Joseph, it seems that the given medication doesn't work for you. How do you think about the medication? Or what do you think about the medication? Very good. Of course, it has an aspect of acknowledging that it did not work. Neetu says, I'm sorry to hear that, um, Mr. Joseph, but it should be helpful if you could answer some of my questions um, when, right. It's, it's a good way of um, asking uh, for their opinion. I see you're holding your head. If I may ask, can you, in your own words, Describe exactly how you are feeling. Excellent. Can you tell me more about the effects on your medication? Elham says, I'm sorry to hear that, but don't be worried very much because some medication can help in your condition. Um, yeah, but it's more of a, a statement from your part rather than asking for opinion. Um, Hi, Joseph. It's nice to see you again. How are you? It seems you're still having discomfort. Can you tell me more about your experience during taking your medicine? Yes, Shem. It's good to ask his um, experience. Yes. 
um, I got that and I can, um, it doesn't work at all or it has some short acting to your pain. So tensing, I suppose what you mean is whether um, it didn't it didn't work at all or you know there was some impact yes crazy yes mr joseph could you tell me when did you take the medication last time yep so perhaps checking for the uh, compliance um yep neetu says please feel free to tell me about your concerns about the treatment and your worries um can you please rate your pain on the scale of one to ten right um, but that's not opinion, Neetu. Um, it's a factual question. Um, that must be tough for you, Jody says. Uh, could you please tell me more of how you're feeling right now? Hello, Mr. Joseph. You seem to be uh, in much pain, I suppose. Can I have a look on the medicine you have been taking? Uh, all right. Um, yep. Uh, she just says, Mr. Joseph, I'm very sorry to hear that you're about your condition. Can I, can I share with you other suggestions? Uh, but I'm not asking you to give suggestions, but ask for his opinion, Shija. Um, Sunil Joseph, Joseph, uh, could you tell me what you're experiencing after you take the medication? All right. Um, well, Princess uh, says, um, please, can I ask you how you're feeling and um, how you are um, thinking about the medications? Uh, sorry, I couldn't catch up with all your responses, but let's look at um, a sample. All right, so here is a question asking the opinion, why do you think that the medicine did not work as expected? So Joseph will have an opinion. Perhaps he might think uh, it was not a good one. The dosage wasn't sufficient or uh, whatever, whatever. So asking for his opinion is a good way of showing respect, acknowledging what he says as well. And then uh, that could be the starting point for the rest of the consultation. Right. So um, let's look at another scenario where you have to apologize. So you're still with Joseph and he has just told you that the medicine did not work. So how do you apologize for that? Now, some of you did respond with apologies and uh, I acknowledge that. So let's look at um, an example of how you could apologize. I'm sorry to hear that the medicine did not work as expected. So apologizing is a great way of showing respect. And um, at times, um, and a lot of OET candidates do ask about how to um, deal with an angry patient. Now, uh, they could be angry for uh, different reasons, perhaps you were pretty busy at uh, the ward or something um, suddenly happened which was unexpected so there could be a lot of reasons but when they are angry for whatever reason whether it, it's your fault or um, a perceived shortcoming still an ideal starting point would be to apologize so it's always good to say sorry for something um, which did not match their expectations or for poor outcomes or poor treatment or care. And that's not something uh, of a weakness. So a, a, a lot of times clinicians and other health professionals are hesitant to say uh, uh, sorry. Now it's a good way and you start uh, showing respect to the patient good going so let's look at the uh, next patient so we have edward and now i want you to type in your questions or statements asking for consent it's an important part of showing respect to your patient or uh, to the 
uh, carer in the OTS context is to ask for um, permission or consent. Um, a nurse or doctor is discussing the advanced care plan option for, options for Edward, a terminally ill patient. Now, uh, depending on which country you come from, or what practice you are in, your awareness of advanced care plan or advanced directive might vary. For instance, in uh, countries like India, people may not be really aware of uh, advanced care plan, while um, in the UK or Australia or Canada or uh, America for that matter, there is a greater awareness and uh, you have policies and protocols on how to record a patient's advanced uh, directive. Now, you, even if you have not been involved in it, uh, you are you could be familiar with uh, a lot of the terminology like uh, living will and uh, uh, recording a DNR and uh, things of that sort. So how do you ask Edward for permission? Now, it's very important uh, that you ask for permission and uh, that is uh, again a starting point for how you show respect and build rapport and uh, show dignity and compassion to the patient. Um, yes. Um, Mary says, I would like you to grant me permission to discuss the plan of care for you. Is that okay? Yes, Mary, that's a good question. Um, and uh, typically, uh, hi, Edward, I'd like to ask for your permission to discuss with uh, you about advanced care plan, uh, is that okay for you? Good morning, Mr. Edward. Uh, I'm here to discuss advanced care plan. Do you have any idea regarding this matter? Excellent. Uh, way to does freedoms. Very good answer. Sharon Anila says, hi, Edward. Before we proceed to discuss about advanced care plan, would you please sign this consent? Yes. Signing the consent form is important, but even before that, it's good to ask them, can you have a discussion on uh, advanced directive and advanced care plan? So please remember, just go in your document, the consent form and asking them to sign um, is a part of it, Sharon, but you should also ask permission for that discussion even before you pop in the um, consent form, but it's a good answer. Um, Mary says, hello, Edward, have you heard about advanced care plan? Can I discuss it uh, if it's okay with you? Excellent, Mary Celine. And Tracy says, may I proceed with further proceedings for planning an advanced care plan for you in order to provide a quality care? Tracy, could you be a bit more direct? It's a little bit going, uh, like beating about the bush, you know? Too many words, which is not good, but usually Tracy gives me very good answers. Make it simple, Tracy. That would be good. Shen says, "Hi, Edward. Thank you for listening. Uh, what listening? Okay. To what is the process? Um, if you still have any questions or clarifications that we can answer, um, if all the details is clear to you, may I ask you to sign the the consent? Okay. Hello, Edward. I'm here to um, have your consent for an advanced care plan." Do you please tell me your thoughts about that before we discuss? Very good, Neetu. Uh, hello, Mr. Edward, how are you doing today? I've come to discuss about your care plan. Would you permit me? Very good, Obia Gary. And Sunil says, hi, Edward, I'd like to discuss to you about the advanced care plan. Shall I proceed with this? Um, yes. Angelo, do you agree about this care plan, Mr. Edward? If you didn't understand something about it, please tell me. I will explain it to you as better as I can. Very good. Melissa says, hello, Edward. I'd like to discuss with you about your care plan. Would you mind if we can discuss at this moment? Well done, Melissa. So, and uh, Patmasri says, um, I would like to discuss more about um, Plant care plan, can we discuss? To understand your condition better, may I ask you some questions uh, regarding this, right? 
Very good, Daisy. Uh, to understand your condition better, may I ask you some questions regarding that? Well done, Daisy, yes. Smita says, I'm here to discuss with you about advanced care plan. Would you like to share your thoughts about it? Jasmine, um, is it okay if I can ask some details to plan our nursing care plan, right, Jasmine? But this is slightly different. Advanced care plan is a bit different from the nursing care plan. Mel says, hello, Edward, how are you? May you grant me permission to discuss your advanced care plan? Princess says, um, can I proceed to explain what it means to help you in recovery, if you wouldn't mind? Please. Yes, Princess, but it's not most, mostly about advanced directive, it's not more about uh, recovery. Of course, it is um, a set of instructions on what should be done should the patient become unresponsive, unable to make decisions for him or her. Okay, so here's an example of what could be uh, talked. Is this the right time for a discussion on the future treatment options if you become very ill? So you're asking the terminally ill patient if at some point of time they become too ill, unable to make the decision for themselves, then what should be done? Should they be put on life support? Should they be resuscitated, etc., etc.? These are some of the questions. So you need to ask uh, permission for your future care, Neetu. Is this time convenient for you? Very good. Yes, Navis, that's uh, Mavis. That's also acceptable, right? So let's move on to the next setting. See to the comfort. Again, we are with Edward. How do you make him feel comfortable before you uh, discuss uh, things? So you can ask questions. On how you could help him feel more comfortable. So attending to the patient's comfort is also important. And when they feel comfortable, they would respond better as well. So please uh, type in your questions or statements where you are seeing to their comfort. What, what would you tell or ask to make sure that they are comfortable? Yes, Shija, uh, is this the right time to talk to you? Yes. Um, Waiter says, uh, is there anything you would like me to attend to? Yes. How are you feeling today? Are you feeling comfortable about the information I gave you? Yes, Angelo. But I'm more into uh, something even before you have given information. At the onset of a discussion, how do you make him more feel comfortable? Hi, Edward. You can feel comfortable to ask me anything. I'm always here to help you. Sharon, right. Yes. Can you think of something more simpler and more uh, something that would happen at the beginning of the discussion where you're just uh, making sure that uh, your patient is comfortable? Um, do you want to discuss this plan with your family, Shen? Yes, that's something that would go with the previous uh, topic where if you want to discuss something with the patient's family, you require their permission or consent for that as well. Excellent, Shen, yes. Right? So, um, so what I've got for you is uh, something much simpler. Before we start the discussion, let me make sure that you are comfortable. Do you want me to pop in a pillow? So just asking them or, you know, to um, elevate their position or something of that sort. Yeah. 
but asking for other concerns and all of that is absolutely um, all right. But even very simple uh, things like making sure they are comfortable in their posture, in their position, would also help a lot. Good to see all of you are very actively participating and uh, great to see all the um, answers coming and that shows how confident most of you are, which is absolutely uh, great. So it's not about uh, just uh, a right answer. You can convey that in different, different ways. So don't be overly concerned if uh, there has been slight uh, variations. Hi, Edward, please be seated. Are you comfortable with this position? Excellent, Daisy. Yes. So let's move on to um, the next uh, topic or aspect on how you can show respect. It's incorporating their personal values. So again, you are with Edward, and he is a terminally ill patient. And so always remember that they will have a set of values belief systems which are important for them. And you need to incorporate that in in the um, care plan, whether it's the advanced directive or a uh, uh, day-to-day nursing care plan or something of that sort. So how do you include their personal value? And remember, we are uh, discussing about a terminally ill patient. So, Yes, Mercy, that's acceptable. And Alvin, very good answers. Um, Mohammed, I will uh, answer your question, uh, how you can start to study, but I'll include that in another session. I'll do a session on that. Um, is there anything you want me to to do for you, uh, for your ease or comfort. Yes. Uh, yes, as spinners, that's great. But we are moving on to incorporating their personal beliefs and values. Um, yeah, I'm looking for your comments on showing respect. We are there. We are the incorporation of their personal values. Right, so uh, Shen says, hi Edward, as we are discussing this plan for you, I'd like you to know that your opinion matters. Excellent. But you can also tell them it's not just their opinion, um, aspects of their beliefs, or uh, we respect your wishes and will take every step to fulfill your wishes. Excellent, Tracy. Um, Akshay is asking how to conclude the conversation. Now, typically in an OET's context, you may not have to wrap up the conversation because most often you could still be in the uh, role play when the interlocutor stops you. So that's all right. Now, a lot of candidates ask, uh, should I finish all the bullet points? You don't have to. It's absolutely all right, even if you have not been able to uh, cover all the points when the interlocutor stopped you. But that doesn't mean that even after five minutes, that's when the interlocutor would stop you, you're still in the first bullet, then that's a problem. It shows that you have not been able to, to move on, move ahead with the uh, conversation. Um, and Pat, Patmasri says, hi hey, Edward, I know that this may be quite dif different from your expectations. I'd like to hear your ideas in this regard. Yes. Uh, Joanne says, um, in, I'd like to uh, incorporate uh, the concerns that has to be incorporated to the advanced care plan. Good. So um, Anitu says, could you share if you have any personal preferences which should be included in this plan? Very good. Very good, Nitu Vergis. 
So I've got an example for you. Would you like to involve a spiritual leader or a religious leader in your advanced care plan? Now, pastoral care is integral part of um, both palliative care and end of life uh, care. So if they have um, any uh, wish, you, you could ask them for that. If they do not have such uh, requests or requirements, that's absolutely fine as well. You don't have to force your personal belief systems on them, but asking if any of their belief systems should be included would be a great idea. Um, and Mary says, hi, Edward, I highly respect your beliefs. I'll try to incorporate these in the care plan. Excellent, Mary. Mr. Edward, um, Smitha says, I can completely understand your problem and we will take every step to fulfill all your wishes. Yes, Smitha. Nonso says, hello, Edward. As we discuss this matter, our final decision is to depend on your views. Very good, very good. So that's very, very important. Now let's move on to the next um, aspect of uh, showing respect. And now I want you to think about how would you consider their priorities? So patients always have different priorities. As a health professional, you will have a set of priorities. And the, the topmost item would be uh, quickly uh, treating your patient or delivering care. But your patient's priorities could be different. So when you consider those priorities, you're showing respect. So we have Maya and Maya is a busy lawyer and um, she's being asked to modify her lifestyle as she suffers from hypertension and diabetes. So being a, a busy lawyer, Maya would have a different set of um, priorities than yours. So how are you going to consider her priorities um, as a part of showing a respect and dignity, but also uh, making uh, her part of the, um, the uh, decision making? Right. So think of uh, how can you uh, consider Maya's priorities? So Maya being a busy lawyer might not really want, uh, may not be thinking of giving much importance to the treatment or your suggestions. So how will you uh, include what she thinks is important and what you think is important, but balancing both. Think of your response for Maya, and that's going to be uh, great. I know you have been patiently uh, involved in this discussion, and uh, yes, waiter. Uh, good morning, Miss Maya. I would like to ask you, ask if you fully understand your health condition now. Are you ready to change your lifestyle? Right, Sharon says. Hi, Maya, I understand that you have a very busy life. So I wonder you can tell me your schedule so that I can help you according to that. Good, Sharon. A join says, Maya, I understand that you have a hectic working schedule. Can you share with me what you have in mind to improve your health condition? Excellent. So, I've got something similar for you. I can see that you are busy at work. What sort of an exercise do you think best fits your lifestyle? So perhaps considering her lifestyle, you would ask her to suggest an exercise, which she could do. Neetu says, I totally understand your situation, um, Maya. It must be difficult for you to make a sudden lifestyle change, but I'm sure you will be able to achieve this slowly for your own good. Yes. Um, and Padma Sri says, I know you, you have been a busy professional. Shall we begin according to priority with your schedule? Yeah. So in different ways, you're trying to prioritize, which is a good thing. Uh, 
Sudesha says, hi Maya, I understand your nature of work. Despite that, I wonder uh, if you consider giving importance to your lifestyle modification that, that suits your routine, right? And let's move on to another simple aspect, but important in showing respect. How can you be considerate of the patient's time? Now, this is also important because in many places, the patient's time is not valued. For instance, um, sometimes the patients are kept waiting for long, longer periods of time uh, and, uh, and nobody in the healthcare system might really uh, be bothered about that. So how do you be appreciative of Maya coming to the clinic and taking her, her time off? to see you. I know that a lot of uh, health professionals may not really think that is important because they think that their time is more valuable. Not everyone, but there could be people who think that their time is more precious or valuable than the, their patients, but that may not be the case. So learn how to be constrained of their time, right? All right. What issues do you think we could discuss first, right? So I think uh, some of you are still with the previous question. Um, let me know, waiter says, let me know when will you be available in order for me to help you modify your lifestyle, right? Hi, Maya. Sharon says, I'm sorry that you had to wait so long. Great to be um, here to discuss your issue. I appreciate. I appreciate that you have, you came to for sorry came for review today. It shows how concerned you are about your health. Yes, me too. All right. So you could say something like, thank you very much for taking the time to visit the clinic for this discussion. Something as simple as that, but appreciative of their time. So finally, let's come to another aspect of showing respect, which is being sensitive to embarrassing or distressing situations. Now we have Claire and she has urinary incontinence. So, it could be difficult to ask her to uh, talk about her condition. People could have very embarrassing situations and um, they may think that you may not really uh, take it into consideration, right? So how do you treat Claire with respect and make her comfortable and make her discuss her urinary incontinence? And for people who work in uh, care homes or uh, district nurses who, who go to patients' home, you would have come across patients like Claire, many of them who have a lot of distressing, difficult, embarrassing situations which they may not want to discuss with a lot of health professionals. And it's your duty and your skill that would make them comfortable to discuss those issues with you. All right. So Claire is our final patient among all of them from Andrew to Amelia to everyone, Maya and everyone who helped you to learn a lot of important aspects of clinical communication to help you perform better in your OT speaking and at work as a health professional. So Neetu says, hello, Ms. Claire, this must be um,
Um, yeah. Yes. Jim. Janine says, hi, Claire, I'm your nurse today. I'd like to ask your permission for me to ask some questions regarding your urinary incontinence. Are you comfortable discussing it with me? How can I know? Okay, somebody was asking about the waterworks, which is excellent. Um, is this the right time to talk about um, things you have to do? Do you want to tell me something? Yes, Mary, that's good. Good mom, it says, hi, according to your health condition, you must bring some, oh, okay, that's the previous one, right. I understand how you feel, um, however, I need to know regarding your condition in order to provide good management. Yes, waiter, yes, excellent. So I've got something for you. Must be very embarrassing for you to discuss your inability to hold your urine. So you are acknowledging the uh, predicament. You are accepting that it is uh, very embarrassing for them. Excellent, yes, I see all the answers. I'm sorry I couldn't catch up with all your comments, but I will definitely review every one of them. So I hope you have learned a lot of things which will help you to improve your speaking for the OET and also in how you um, show respect to your patients at work. If you have got any questions, please pop in your questions before we wrap today's session. So you could uh, ask about uh, today's session or about uh, OET's uh, test preparation. And I'd be happy to um, take a few questions before we uh, call it a day. Meanwhile, let me know if some of you are taking the test sooner. I'd be really happy uh, to consider your preparation as well in the upcoming sessions. Nitu says, does accent matter in OET? No, Nitu, accent is not important in OET as long as you are intelligible. Intelligibility is important. Accent is not important. When it comes to OET's listening subtest, you may have to listen to various accents, accents, sorry, but you don't have to speak in a particular accent. You don't have to have um, an Aussie accent or um, a, a British accent, very generally speaking. Um, and even you can't say uh, you know, a British accent because every country has a lot of sub accents. It doesn't matter. Absolutely, it should be intelligible. Your listener should be able to understand what you are saying. Um, yes. You're welcome, Neetu, uh, Anoop. Uh, join how to reduce awkwardness while wearing face mask and uh, face shield. It's, it's the new reality. You have to learn to accept it, but you can also practice uh, wearing a mask. Uh, if you are asked to, uh, which is uh, now the new norm. You're welcome, Saud. Thank you very much, Smita. Um, all right. You're welcome, Sharon. You're welcome, Smita. Thank you, everyone, for your time. I am really happy to uh, have spent some time with you, helping you prepare for your OET uh, test. So I wish you uh, the very best in your test taking, in your preparation. Please don't forget uh, to comment and IRS group as a premium preparation provider and an all stars uh, preparation provider is very happy to have all these sessions for you. I'll be back in a couple of days with um, uh, more uh, on clinical communication, no need to the interlocutor doesn't mark, give you scores, it's the assessors. Um, uh, sh should you use Mr. or Mrs.? Um, well, uh, it depends, you can ask them uh, if, uh, how they would prefer to be addressed, that's a, a acceptable practice. But at the same time, you can use the interlocutor's name as well. You're welcome. Uh, Non so, JC, Bianca, Jasmine, everyone. I look forward to seeing you in the next sessions. Please make sure you um, 
register for the upcoming All Stars um, speaking skill mastery session coming up in uh, another week or so. Thank you very much, and I appreciate your time. So please feel free to uh, be in touch with IRS Group if you need any assistance on your OET preparation. We do offer online and regular sessions for OET uh, test takers. Thank you very much. Good luck. And um, my best wishes regarding uh, depending on wherever you are. Thank you very much. And I'll see you soon.